What is going on everybody? I am currently heading towards the Toledo, Ohio Service Center from Michigan and I get the question a lot, what is the service experience like in Michigan because in Michigan we don't have any service centers so I thought I would share that with you. Uh, first thing I want to say thank you to Chris H, my newest patron. So this may be changing soon. If you saw the recent news, I do have a video about it. Tesla did settle with the state of Michigan in their lawsuit to allow direct sales and service centers. It doesn't seem like there's gonna be Tesla stores and service centers all over the place now. There's still some you know, weirdness in the law. But anyway, as of now, the service experience for a Michigander is not the most convenient because you have to travel to Ohio to get service. So I haven't needed to visit a service center before. This is the first time I've had to do it. And I'm excited, I'm going to get my hardware three. So I really want to do this, um, but I did have to take a day off of work to be able to go in you know, and have the time to drop the car off. It kind of worked out though, because today is Stephanie's birthday. So that'll be fun later. We'll hang out after I get back from this. But I'm heading there and you know what? I don't even know what's going on today. I tried to, they pretty much communicate with you through text. And I tried to text them and say, hey, am I getting a loaner? Or is the car gonna just be finished before I leave? Or, or what's gonna happen? And nobody ever answered me. So from what I hear, Michiganders always get loaners when they go to Ohio. Tesla used to actually bring us a car and take our car for us and, and do all that stuff, but they don't offer that anymore. So now we just get a car, is what I hear, and then we can come back and drop it off when we're ready. So I'm actually kind of excited for that, to be honest. I would like to drive you know, a Model S around for a little bit. But the drive down there is 79 miles. It's gonna take me an hour and a half. And I'm actually pretty close to the Ohio border. I mean, if you're in Northern Michigan, you're gonna be like driving hours to get to this place. And it's just really not feasible. And again, like I said, I haven't really needed service. Um, so it hasn't been a big deal for me, but it's always on the back of your mind. You know, I'm, I'm buying this expensive car and I'm sure for the first few years, there's not gonna be any problems, nothing to worry about. But if you have the car for four or five years and then you do start needing service, you have to take it, especially with these crappy roads, you have to take it down to Tesla to get something looked at or fixed or a warranty repair, then uh, you know it, it's a far drive. So luckily for collision stuff, you don't have to go to the service center. Actually, Toledo is not even set up for collision yet. I talked to them about my bumper and they told me, well, you can't come here, but you have a couple places that are really close to you, just go there. They're fully Tesla certified, which means they went through all the training. They have the same software, they have the same hardware. Um, and even sometimes the mobile techs will visit those places if those guys need help with what they're doing. So I've heard some crazy things uh, about this service center. I guess it's not the nicest spot um, and it's like just an afterthought, but we'll see. Uh, let's check it out. Let's see how it goes. Uh, I will, I guess, talk to you guys when I get down there and see if, you know, I'm getting a car or what the heck's going on. Okay, so we just have barely passed into Ohio here and we are pulling up on the Tesla service center. And there it is on the right. I don't know if you can see it yet, but if you can't, you're about to. Uh, I'm gonna go into this next entrance here. And there's just like Teslas everywhere all day. Got the Tesla sign on the front and there's like some random minivan over there. So uh, this is great. I love being surrounded by Teslas. Um, I guess I'll just park here. I have no idea. And we'll go inside. I'm gonna have to pack up all my filming. That's a Model S with no autopilot on it. That's amazing. So I still have no idea what's gonna happen if I'm getting a loaner or whatever, um, but uh, let's, let's see. All right, what is going on everybody? I just dropped my car off at the service center. And if you can't tell, I'm currently driving a Model X. This is actually a P90D, which is really exciting. Now, at the service center, they didn't seem to know me. I get a lot of comments like, oh, they're doing it for YouTubers and blah, blah, blah. And um, that's good. I'm glad I don't want them to know me. I don't want special treatment because then I can't really share the experience with you. So I got there, um, I dropped the car off. It went really smoothly. Here's some pictures of the inside and what the place looked like. And it's still under construction. There really isn't much there. I saw the waiting room. They did talk to me about staying. They were kind of debating. He said that the upgrade can take three to four hours but sometimes it will fail and then it'll take overnight. So he said that they're gonna send me a text as soon as my car is done and then I can come pick it up and it may be tomorrow. And I told him that I have a busy day at work tomorrow and he said if I came Wednesday, as long as I'm in communication with them, today's Monday, as long as I'm in communication with them, no problem, they really don't care all that much. So a really nice experience. Um, they were kind of debating giving me this car or not and they were just, there were two guys and they were just kind of talking to each other like, 
oh, we have this one, do we have this one? And I heard them say Model X, and I was like, yep, that sounds good. And then the one guy's like, well, there's a problem with the the passenger window. And I was like, I don't need windows. <laughs> and then I was like, all right, I'll shut up. I don't want to, you know, be annoying, but just so you know. Um, okay, so stay below 75. So I do have to stop at a supercharger. They did tell me, you know, um, that it didn't have much range. And I was like, I, I don't care. I'll stop at the supercharger. That's fine. Um, so we're going to do that. And it does have autopilot. So there's a little mini stock you can't see, but it's down in the bottom left of the steering wheel. And you don't, you pull it twice towards you instead of in the Model 3. It's right here and you push it down twice. Luckily, I knew how to do that from driving a Model S one time. Uh, this is my first time ever driving a Model S. And the guy told me, uh, he's like, you're really going to appreciate your car after you drive that. And I was kind of like, what are you talking about? And um, I kind of get what he's saying. Like, the steering wheel is massive. Oh, my gosh, this thing is huge. And I don't like it all that much, but it's not that big of a deal. Uh, when it was a P, I was like, oh, P90D. Oh, let's step on it. And when I step on it, let's see if you can hear. Okay, so it didn't do it that time. The acceleration doesn't seem all that impressive. I don't know if it's because the battery's low or maybe the zero to 60 times on these aren't that different from a Model 3. I really don't know the stats on this car. But anyway, I thought, ooh, a performance, this is gonna be insane. And for now, it's uh, not really that insane. But I'm excited, I'm gonna go home and me and Stephanie are gonna check it out. We'll take baby for a little joy ride. Um, so I will update you when I hear more about my car. Um, I'll probably just update you at the pickup, which is probably the best place to do that. So see you there. Well, I'm picking my car up, but uh, this is the message I was greeted with, so I think I need to get that changed. All right, so we're back in the Model 3. Uh, I'm here for pickup. I dropped off my car January 27th, about 11.30 a.m. It's now January 29th, uh, 9.30 a.m. They said the car may be done that day. They said the upgrade for Hardware 3 takes three to four hours, uh, but they gave me the loaner because he said that sometimes it fails. Um, and then they have to restart the whole process. And I'm really glad that they did that because uh, obviously it wasn't done that night. The car finished yesterday, uh, I think it was around noon or 1 p.m. or something like that. And then I just let them know I'd be there you know, this morning and they said, no problem. So overall, my service experience in Michigan has been really good. Um, I have not checked out anything yet. So I went into the autopilot settings here and we have the full self-driving visualizations preview, which I'm gonna turn on. So traffic light and stop sign visualizations are not a substitute for an attentive driver. It doesn't do anything, it doesn't stop, it doesn't react to these things, it just shows them to you. So I'm gonna turn them on. Um, I did notice one thing, my uh, navigate on autopilot, I can't turn my lane changes off. Um, I don't know if we need some kind of calibration driving, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm tempted to go in there and ask, uh, but I think I probably need to drive for a bit. So we will see. Okay, so here we go. I'm routing to a supercharger. I'm gonna charge up just a bit. Um, and oh, there it is. We have the arrows. We have the stop sign. Oh my gosh, that is too exciting. That looks so cool. Oh man, I'm really excited for this. So I still need to use my turn signal. Um, so we're off. It showed a cone over there. I think it was actually a fire hydrant. And autopilot is on. So I'm not sure what's going on with Navigate on Autopilot, not allowing me to turn on or turn off confirmations, um, but I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna park again. You can't do it while you're in drive, so I may park one more time and try it again and just see what that does. But overall, uh, my service experience, again, in Michigan was really good. Um, I'm happy they gave me the loaner. If it wasn't, oh, showing, yeah, it's picking up the fire hydrants as Collins, that's so funny. Um, oh, there's the light. Here's our first traffic light, and it sees it as green yep it shows green on there oh my gosh that is so cool and then they kind of fly off to the side and it sees those cones way over there wow that is really good oh this is so exciting um so yep it's showing all those cones on the, oh my gosh it showed all four of them it's crazy so the point of this video is uh service in michigan um it is inconvenient that it is so far away the only good thing is I haven't needed service. It's just this one time I've needed to go uh, down to Toledo. And this was uh, for fun. You know, it's something I wanted to do. It's an upgrade I was looking forward to, so I didn't mind. And I got a Model X for a couple days, which was a lot of fun. Uh, and I got a couple of videos out of that. And uh, Stephanie really enjoyed, you know, the Model X. So service experience in Michigan for me hasn't been that bad. Uh, but I am excited for them to start building service centers in Michigan because it'll be a lot more convenient and new potential owners won't be worried. You know, that's one of the first questions I usually get is there's no service centers in Michigan. What do you do? And luckily I can say, well, my car's been great. I don't really worry about it. But that will ease fears for people once we at least get our first built. And then you can know 
that more service centers at least are coming once we get the first one up in Michigan. Uh, so that'll be really good. So if you have any questions, leave them below. I'll do my best to answer those for you. My experience was really good and you will see me in the next video. Garbage can.